What up, ladies and gentlemen, quick video here to show you the differences between blocking and non-blocking languages. I have a server here that when you hit API ping, it's going to take three seconds to respond. It runs locally, so it's generally always around three seconds. I don't have to wait for some internet service to go up or down. But let's show you Lua. Lua is a blocking language. I'm going to import the HTTP client. I'm going to print. It's how you log to the screen, very similar to console log in JavaScript. I'm then going to make an HTTP request, which is an asynchronous request. There is zero difference between synchronous and asynchronous in terms of how you code. That's why a lot of languages do this. It makes it very, very simple for the developer to not have to care if their code is instantaneous or it could take up to three seconds or more. It doesn't matter. You write normal imperative style one line after the other. But how it operates is different. This line will literally stop and freeze and you will not see any other console log statements or print statements until it has finished either getting a success or an error from this operation. Once it's done, it'll then set that variable and continue on running the code. So let's go ahead and run Lua, main.lua file. We'll see that it's calling, and then three seconds later, pull it out, it gives you the done. Let's show you that one more time. It calls print, but then it waits on line three. Then three seconds later, it runs that. Python, very, very similar. We import the request module, just like you do in Node. We do a print statement, and Python, just like Lua, will block. Many other languages do this, C Sharp, Java, Ruby, etc. We're going to wait for this asynchronous operation to occur. Once it's complete, successful, or error, we'll then get this return value, assuming no exceptions, and then it'll print it out. So let's show you Python. Main pi. Python calls the API ping three seconds later, then it responds. Now JavaScript doesn't work like that. Let's show you the callback version first. We're making a request just like we did in Python and Lua, but we provide a second parameter, which is a callback function. This function right here, it's an arrow function. It'll run when this request is complete. So it won't stop on line three, four, or five. It'll literally run the code and immediately proceed to the next line of code. Let's go ahead and run the callback. Notice how it says JavaScript is calling ping but then it was done and then it runs, okay, I'm done after the done. JavaScript doesn't block. It doesn't pause on a line of code. It'll run all your code and then run the asynchronous operations later. So if you think of an HTTP thread in the background, it's responsibilities to handle all that. Your main thread that runs your code runs immediately. And at some point in the future, whenever those things are done, loading from the internet or something bad happens, it'll call your callback. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is the difference between blocking and non-blocking code. Other languages such as Lua and Python, the difference between how you write synchronous and asynchronous code is no different, but the way it runs it is very, very different. It actually pauses on that line of code. Whereas in JavaScript, it does not pause at all or stop. It keeps on going. And at some point in the future, whether it's the callback or the promise, if you define that value, you have to provide that functional no when your operation's done in a more reactive style.